Hey YouTube, how's it going? Happy Saturday to you. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I want to talk about the reason that people like myself and others who find themselves involved with narcissists or have been involved with narcissists in the past, why we stay so long and why we stay long beyond the warning signs and long beyond everything has gone bad. There's a powerful bonding technique that narcissists use, sometimes consciously, but I honestly think a lot of times subconsciously, and that's a narcissist forgiveness. So it looks a little something like this. Most codependents or victims of narcissistic abuse will reach a breaking point because we're human. There's only so much people can take. Even the most patient person has a breaking point. And the narcissist will push you to that breaking point. And a lot of us experience something called codependent rage where it's, or an explosion where it's just an outburst at this person for everything they've done, everything they've put you through. The pot boils over and your emotions just come flooding out at them. You probably say things or write things that you would never say under normal circumstances. You feel really bad about it afterwards. And usually following an explosion like this, if it's like a romantic relationship, it's usually followed with a breakup because all throughout your relationship with the narcissist, you will make several attempts to get away. There's something in you that tries to escape, but the narcissist has ways of pulling you and yanking you back in. So you blow up, you explode, you have the breakup and you're not speaking. Well, this period of no contact can go on for a day, a couple hours, it can go on for a couple weeks or a couple months, but the point is you're not speaking. And during this period, you're going through a lot of different emotions. You're grieving, you're running through scenarios over and over again in your head to see what you could have done different. You're thinking about what you said, you're feeling bad about it. And then out of nowhere, the narcissist reaches out and you all have a conversation or you respond because the thing about it is you have real emotions towards this person. You actually do really love them or you do really care. So when the narcissist reaches out to you, you miss them. So your natural inclination in the beginning is going to be to reach back because you want nothing more than to fix the relationship. And if you were dealing with a healthy, normal human being, you might actually be able to do that. Well, we have to program in the realization that these are not healthy, normal human beings. So when the narcissist reaches back out and they seem to have forgiven you for your sin of exploding at them, for your sin of showing too much emotion, for your whatever you think the sin is, of course, they're going to let you take the blame for it. Of course, they're not going to be apologetic about anything. But here's where the bonding comes in. They quote unquote, forgive you for what you did, which is nothing more than call them out on all the games and the manipulation and the lies that they've been playing. And then you start to think to yourself, wow, if we can overcome a fight like that, if we can overcome an argument like that, maybe we are meant to be together. Maybe we are built to last. Maybe we are one of those couples that can weather the storm. Wow, you know, I'm so proud of us. We, we exploded at each other, or really it's probably just you exploding at them, and they know that they deserve it. That's part of the reason they come back, because they know your anger and your rage is not unfounded. They know exactly what caused it, and they're probably wondering what took so long for it to manifest. <laughs> they're probably wondering how they were able to do it for six months, and you finally blew up after month, month six. So, they're coming back because they know they, they deserved it. They know that you'll create this fantasy in your head of you guys being stronger. But here's the bigger reason that they come back. They come back because they're not through with you yet. So it really doesn't matter what you say to them because they cannot be insulted because they don't really have feelings. And chances are you're not the worst that they've ever done. <laughs> and chances are Whatever insults you hurled at them when you exploded is not the worst they've ever heard and they know that they're deserving of so much more. So that's why they don't really take your explosion seriously enough to never speak to you again. If you were dealing with someone who was normal and healthy 
and had self-respect and dignity and, and pride, if you really were being irrational, if you really were being abusive with your language towards someone who didn't deserve it, they would probably dismiss you out of their life. They would take that breakup for what it is and they'd probably never speak to you again or they'd never make contact with you again because they would be so hurt that you would either accuse them of such a thing that you believed whatever it was you were accusing them of. They would be hurt that you didn't feel like you could talk to them about it, that you chose to explode and, and verbally abuse them and belittle them and degrade them. They'd be hurt. A narcissist is not hurt. A narcissist eats it up. That's like fresh air for a narcissist. That's like food. That's like water. Watching your emotions explode, watching your rage build up, knowing that they caused it, knowing that they're the ones that cause such an outburst towards them, especially if you're somebody who's normally very calm, very cool, very collected. If you're somebody who other people respect, if you're somebody who's well liked, if you're somebody who's got some kind of prestige, some kind of status, you know, someone who you'd expect to be able to keep it together, and they made you blow up at them, you know, it's kind of like, for a perfect example, I love using pop culture examples because they're everywhere, and I think that we can learn a lot. So Beyonce made this whole Lemonade album, which those of you who are not familiar, was basically an entire album that detailed the affair that Jay-Z had on her, how it made her feel, what it did to their relationship, and ultimately how they reconciled. And don't get me started on that. I have my own thoughts and opinions on that, but that's the layout of the whole album. And I bet you, you know, Jay-Z's all contrite now. He's all, you know, he's sorry for it now. He's, he's being the good husband and the good dad now. But deep down inside, somewhere he's like, I got Beyonce to explode at me. Beyonce. You know, this is the number one entertainer in the entire world. Wealthy, beautiful. You know, fans worship her. Um, will worship her for life to the grave and beyond. And you got her to lose her cool towards you. Believe me, I promise you, he may never say it, he may never articulate it, but I guarantee you that's what he's feeling inside because if the album is true, if the story is true, and if, if what she's saying happened is true, then he's a textbook narcissist. Textbook. Textbook narcissist. You can listen to some of his old songs and hear that. He's a textbook narcissist. So he loves the fact that the number one woman who really shouldn't ever be exploding at any man, ever, why? <laughs> Why in the world? What would you ever need to get that angry at one of them for? Dismiss them and move on. You're Beyonce. You can have any guy. So if one is treating you poorly, cheating on you, making a fool of you in front of all these people, you dismiss him and you move on to someone who will treat you properly. But the fact that not only did he cheat on her, got her to explode in a very public fashion, she took him back. So that fed his ego, that fed that narcissistic supply need, but it also, for her, deeply bonded that relationship. Because, you know, for all intents and purposes, she put all their business out in the street, and if he can forgive her, forgive her for that, then she can forgive him for what he did, and now they're bonded even tighter. Now he can really go do what he wants to do, because, she believes their relationship is stronger than it's ever been because they got through it, okay? So that's a very perfect public pop culture example of narcissistic forgiveness and how deeply it can bond you because it's amazing how codependent people blame themselves for their explosion at bad behavior. It, it's kind of unreal. They deserve every ounce of anger that you give to them, and then some. They deserve so much more. They deserve to have been left years ago, months ago, weeks ago. They deserve to have been left is actually what they deserved. But, you know, codependent people tend to blame themselves for being so mean when really they deserve every ounce of that, that meanness. And you're feeling bad about being mean is what enables them to operate 
it's what enables them to to live in your airspace to to occupy a portion of your life because you feel guilty for being mean to them but they don't feel anything for being mean to you they feel nothing so when they forgive you for being mean you think wow I can really be myself I can explode and cry and yell and have emotion and they forgive me for that they forgive me for being human oh yay yay they forgive me for being a person they forgive me for reacting to their bullshit they forgive me for all that so you know we must be meant to be it, it must be destiny for us to be together because we can get through anything and that's how you end up bonding to these crazy crazy people who are very very disturbed and just be careful of that if you found yourself verbally abusing someone and not only do they come back but they come back and kind of act like nothing happened like they weren't affected by it at all you're probably dealing with a narcissist because most people with self-respect and dignity will not allow themselves to be verbally abused by anyone they're going to try to talk it out like normal people healthy people adults and if they can't they move on to someone who can interact with them in a more adult way so that's the powerful bonding technique of a narcissist forgiveness thanks for listening take care